What should each of the 16 personalities keep to themselves? What is the thing that your personality type is saying that's awkward, embarrassing, too much information, and you don't even realize you're saying it? Or if you do, you don't realize you should be keeping it private. So we're gonna go through all 16 personalities and by the end, you should be embarrassed. You should be like, Frank, I wish I hadn't watched this video. Frank, that's what I say after all your videos. <laughs> no! Okay. <laughs> and pay attention not just to your type, but to types similar to yours because in, in Myers-Briggs and the 16 personalities, there's a lot of overlap. You can learn a lot from other types, from their mistakes. First up on the chopping block are the ESFPs. Now, you all do this thing where you say stuff that uh, other people probably wouldn't want you to say. People give you information not thinking that you're gonna spread it around and then you spread it around. It's worth pointing out that ESFPs, you guys don't do this because you're like malicious or gossipy. You do it because information to you should just be free. It feels wrong to you to not say something that you know. The facts should just be spread around to everybody. But, uh, <laughs> maybe not all the time. Maybe when my brother told me about his chronic diarrhea problems, he didn't expect me to tell all of our friends. ESTPs, what you should keep quiet, are all the times where you feel like you swooped in and saved the day. All the stories where you are the hero. ESTPs are naturally super cool, but I think sometimes you have this desire, this deep desire to be liked by everyone, and it feels kind of weird to you, so the way that you get at it is by saying, hey, look at all the cool stuff I did. Look at these great decisions I made. And yeah, I'm sure you've done some great stuff and, you know, saved the day once or twice. But you know, to be liked, you don't need to tell us about the time that you came in with one minute left in the game and you scored the winning goal. I mean, it's amazing that you did that. I'm not saying <laughs> never talk about it, but don't bring it up just like at random times. ESFJs, keep it to yourself when you think you know what someone's intentions are. ESFJs, you love to do this. You get worked up. Someone does something that maybe you don't think is right. Maybe you think it was mean. And then you'll just be like, well, I'm jumping to this conclusion about what their terrible intentions were. Like maybe there's a friend get together and the person organizing it didn't invite you. It might be easy to jump to the conclusion that they hate me now or that person is thoughtless. You might even go so far as to just like cut that person out of your life. When in reality, it could just be a simple honest mistake. The problem isn't so much you jumping to the conclusion, it's then spreading around what your assumption is. Telling people what you think of this person, what you think of their character and what their intent was because of some some small thing and you don't really know what was going on for sure. It's better to just keep that to yourself and see what is actually going on. ENFJs, what you gotta keep to yourself are the times when you don't believe in yourself. We all have times where it's like, man, I just don't believe in myself. And it's good to be able to express that to a friend, to a therapist, to someone you trust. I'm not saying that you should just live with this burden of <laughs> lacking confidence. However, the ENFJs, you guys, all EJs really, will do this thing a lot of times where they just talk about their lack of confidence constantly. They will pull in a bunch of their friends and be like, man, I just don't know if I can do this thing. They'll say, no, you can do it, we believe in you, and you'll be like, okay. And then like a day or two later, you're right back there being like, I don't know if I can really do it, do you really think I can do it? Your inferior function is introverted thinking, and that is your interior decision-making function. That is where, you know, the belief in yourself lives. And because it's your inferior function, it's like, well, I can't really rely on that. The extroverted feeling wants that validation, wants people to keep saying, no, 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 you can do it, we believe in you. And that's why you keep coming back to that, you know, same state of saying, oh, I don't know if I have the confidence, I don't know if I can do it. Once they have built you up a bit, trust them from that one time and just go forward and try to push through those, those feelings of lacking confidence. Because this is one thing where if you keep talking about how you don't believe in yourself, how you lack confidence, it doesn't help. It's like, it's like this vicious cycle. It's making the problem worse by talking about it, by seeking the reassurance and validation. ISTJs, keep to yourself your knee-jerk reactions, your hot takes about stuff that you don't fully understand. You guys have a tendency to see something, you have a gut reaction to it, something new, something where it's like, well, I've never seen that before. I don't really 
really get what's going on there. And here's my judgment about it. I don't like that thing. No IJ really likes new things. And the ISTJs in particular, it's like when something new presents itself, especially a new idea, something that is more abstract, because of that inferior extroverted intuition, the gut reaction is to be like, get it away from me, which is fine to feel that. That's fair. But you have a tendency to constantly say that to like everything new that comes up to the point where after a while, people just expect you to be the guy who poops on anything <laughs> different. Give it some time. Keep it to yourself for a little bit at least. Let yourself get acclimated to whatever that new idea is. Chew on it for a while and then present your opinion. ISFJs, what you gotta keep to yourself for the most part is the way you do things. You guys have a specific way that you like to do things. You've got your routines, you've got your methods for doing every little thing in your life, how you have your life organized. And because you are an IJ, because you will generally, more generally a J type, you don't mind kind of trying to control other people and impose this structure on them. And you're doing it with good intention. The extroverted feeling that you have is trying to use this control of other people to improve their life. It's like here, I'm trying to force my way of doing things upon you because it'll make you happier in the end. It's hard to dial back because your dominant function is introverted sensing, which is very detail oriented on real things, like having your life organized in the sensory world, like having your desk organized, having your pantry organized. It's much easier for you to pick out in, in other people's everyday life, the places where your systems could benefit them. Unintentionally, what this ends up doing, if you don't rein it in a bit, is other people think you're telling them they are wrong wrong all the time, which is ironic because I feel like that's not what you're trying to do at all. You could always just ask people first before you say, here's my way of doing things. And if they say no, you're just like, okay, <laughs> live in filth. <laughs> ENTJs, what you should keep to yourself is whose fault you think something is. When something goes wrong, you might have the gut reaction to be like, well, why did this go wrong? Who was at the heart of this issue? All of us J types, well, for the most part, the J types, they're very team oriented. In this particular case in the ENTJ, you've got extroverted thinking. Extroverted thinking and extroverted feeling are both like, hey, we're a team. We're doing this all together. Of course, the problem is when something goes wrong, when there is a failure, the, the ENTJ is going to be like, okay, well, this isn't my fault. <laughs> Whose fault is it? Maybe I am the one who actually did the wrong thing. But then you'll hear them say something like, well, someone else should have told me. Someone should have stepped in and corrected me because they have that team mentality. And in the mind, mind of the ENTJs, I know that you guys aren't like purposefully trying to deflect blame and give it to someone else, but that's what it feels like you're doing. You don't want to take it all on yourself, so you're trying to spread it around. So it's good for you guys to avoid that initial impulse to be like, okay, who did it? And to just put, put on the brakes and be like, how can I take responsibility for whatever went wrong, whatever failure this is? And maybe ultimately it is someone else's fault, but you guys, <laughs> you types tend to be the people in charge, the managers, and at some point, you've got to take it on yourself. ESTJs, watch out, keep it to yourself when you talk about the people who make you insecure. What's interesting is, I think you guys do this without realizing that you are directly talking about someone who is making you insecure. Or it's like you're not admitting, you're not saying, this guy makes me insecure. But what you'll see is the ESTJs get, they get kind of worked up as they are talking about one particular person. And they do everything they can to kind of like, rip apart this person, their character, and say, you know, what's so bad about this person? This person doesn't bother me at all, and that is why I'm focusing on this person so much. <laughs> this is an instance of you realize you're talking about it, but you don't realize that everyone else can feel that you are super weird about it. Everyone else clearly sees that this person has gotten under your skin. So ESTJs, I would suggest that the next time you have the inclination to start ranting about someone, maybe hold back a bit because you might unintentionally reveal to everyone that, hey, I am really bothered by this person. They make me feel bad about myself, which is probably not the message you're trying to give. ENTPs. 
I got something to tell you. <laughs> okay, you guys, you know you like to argue and debate or whatever. I feel like it's kind of a layup. It's an easy, predictable thing for me to say. Don't say it when you think you're right, when you think someone else is wrong, just keep it to yourself. That's not exactly what I'm gonna say here though. I mean, yes, maybe do that a little less, but what you really should keep to yourself is sort of the emotional side of that when you know you are right. It's one thing to enter into a discussion with someone, perhaps even a debate, and be like, well, I think your position is wrong. Here's my side of it. That's fair. It's a whole nother thing to be like, you are wrong. I am right. I am so smart. Ooh, let's see what your dumb argument is. Because at that point, what happens is you're not listening to what the other person is saying. At the very least, if you get cocky when you know you're right and someone else is wrong, it's not a good look. I know that you guys aren't the best at, you know, reading the room emotionally. You're not the worst, but you're also not the best. So let me tell you, pe people don't like it when they can see it on your face that you know you're right. I don't care if the other person is making the dumbest argument on earth. Well, I mean, I guess it depends on the situation, of course. But try to keep a level head and keep your ears open to actually listen to what they're saying. Okay, ENFPs, you guys have some wild and crazy ideas and theories about things. Sometimes this is great when it's like, hey, I came up with this whole creative idea. I, you know, I'm writing a book or I have this funny observation about life. But sometimes it can get a bit dark and disturbing. Sometimes an ENFP will walk up to you dead serious and be like, I think the government is trying to kill all of us. And you're like, oh, that's a funny joke. And they're like, I am not joking. Because ENFPs have that mind that's always working on overdrive and coming up with these crazy ideas that a lot of times are really cool, it's a double-edged sword because they're also coming up with these wild and crazy ideas that they think are reality. The ENFPs are not looking at the sensory very much. They have introverted sensing and as their inferior function, so it's like, hey, there's all these possibilities. I'm guessing at what's going on. I'm not really looking at the facts. The facts don't matter. So ENFPs, before you say, oh, I read this one piece of information somewhere that, you know, some alien talked to the president and now, <laughs> and now they're having lunch together on Mars with Elon Musk. Maybe just keep it to yourself. I know it feels right. It feels true, but actually it's just your personality type playing a trick on you. Scientifically, speaking, your type is doing a wacky. ISTPs, you guys are super smart. You're always working on something. You have a pet project that you're doing, whatever it is, brewing beer, creating a particle accelerator, and that's all great. It's very cool, but I think you all sometimes just talk about it way too much. I'm not saying never talk about your interests, never talk about what's going on in your life. It's just like you guys, when you get your mind set on something, you're like, okay, this is really cool. This is very interesting. I'm fascinated fascinated in it, but because you guys have extroverted feeling as your inferior function, and extroverted feeling is being able to read how much do people value this, you guys don't realize that you're on different pages with everyone else. To you, this thing is cool. Maybe to a couple other people, it's cool, but on the spectrum, other people may not care. So pull it back a bit and only give a few details here and there if people seem interested. INTPs, this is gonna sound like a weird one, and it's sort of related to the IST but it's like keep to yourself your life story. And I say it's weird because I don't think this is typically the thing you would associate with INTPs because a lot of times they don't say much. But uh, a lot of a lot of INTPs will want to just kind of like start telling you about stuff that they did and try to explore like, oh, why did this work out? Why, why did it end up this way? And look, you might have done some really great, amazing things in your life. And I know to you, it doesn't feel like you're bragging. It just feels like, hey, I'm just telling you interesting things. But it gets a little tiring because all the stories that INTPs tend to tell have them at the center of them. And then you're telling them with extroverted intuition. So they're kind of going all over the place and they're a little bit abstract. So when you're telling a bunch of stories about your life, they might not make any sense to anyone. I think it's great to share stuff that has happened to you that is valuable to you and could be of value to others. But don't let yourself get to that point where you're just word vomiting. ISFPs, here's the thing. You like to share things that you love, especially if it's like a 
movie, a song, a TV show, a YouTube video. You have that extroverted sensing, so you're like, here are things in reality that I think everyone should know about. We gotta spread it around. And that's cool. I'm not saying don't share stuff, but here's the thing. You've got introverted feeling as your dominant function. So you're like, if I like this thing, then it is objectively good. So you will be like, here, other person, here is the music I like. Listen to this. This is amazing. It's the most awesome thing ever. But the possibility that this other person may not like it is not really occurring to you. Or if it does and you're like, oh, they don't like it, you're like, well, they have, <laughs> they have bad taste. I know, it's tempting for you to be like, hey, friend, I love this movie, let's sit down and watch it right now. But sometimes to other people, that can feel like <laughs> a big burden. So just be a bit aware of that. Like just because you love something so much that it's like a part of who you are, doesn't mean that that's gonna translate to other people liking it. It's always great to share and I know that your type isn't like forcing it, you're not trying to control people, but sometimes it's just the amount that you're dumping on people, <laughs> a good kind of dumping. Here's all the great things I love. It can be overwhelming. INFPs, this is a little bit of a weird one. Keep to yourself stories about other people. It's not gossip, that's not what I'm talking about. Just a story that involves someone else. They tend to like turn other people into these weird caricatures. There is just this weirdness that comes through when INFPs talk about an interaction with someone else. Even if the interaction isn't awkward or whatever, just the way they'll like take on the persona of this other person and act them out and stuff and like do their voice and uh, just, I don't know. It feels really weird. I think it just comes down to the fact that you've got introverted feeling as your dominant function and extroverted thinking as the inferior, which is like, here's what everyone else is thinking and the decisions they're making. And so when you're telling a story about yourself and someone else, it's like, that guy over there is like an alien. I don't really have any idea what's going on with that. All these other people around me are just kind of like the, this weird cast of characters. And here I am, the main character. Now, I think, of course, we all kind of feel like that to a degree. But with INFPs, it's like when they're telling stories, you can tell like that's really how they're looking at the world, whether they realize it or not. So I would be a lot more careful and keep some more things to yourself when you are telling stories involving other people. INTJs, keep to yourself the things that you don't know. Okay, <laughs> you're like, Frank, how do I know what I don't know? So why, how do I keep it to myself? Though what I'm saying is INTJs, they get so hyper-focused on certain bits of reality, which tend to be abstract, that there are just whole other experiences in life that they haven't had. Like sometimes kind of basic things where you're like, why? Why don't you know about this? Why haven't you experienced this? You know, you'll get an INTJ who's like, well, I've never had Facebook. I've never been on social media. I don't even know what that's all about. I'm so focused on my five-year plan for my business that I don't know what Twitter is. Now, it's not necessarily gonna be the specifics that I'm mentioning, obviously, but you'll always find with an INTJ that there's just some area of life where it's like, what happened? How did you miss this? It's because they are so focused with that introverted intuition on whatever their vision is that they're not taking the time to like live life. It's kind of awkward for everyone else when you're suddenly like, I've missed that entire part of life and uh, I, I think that's fine. Oh yeah, I've never had chocolate milk before. I, this is the dumbest thing. Examples are tough, man. It's almost like, I guess, that badge of pride that sometimes comes along with it, but it's, it's kind of a weird pride where it's masking a little bit of insecurity, like, yeah, I probably should have done these things. I probably should have learned how to use a washing machine. That's why I'm saying keep it to yourself because it's clear to everyone else that while you may say, oh yeah, I don't need that stuff, people are like, okay, yeah, I can kind of tell that you feel weird about it. INFJs, keep to yourself the grand vision you have for your life and what you want to accomplish. You might be like, well, Frank, isn't it a good thing for me to like talk about this stuff with other people so I can get input and so I can make sure that uh, I'm doing the right thing, that I'm on the right path. Well, in some ways, that's exactly why you shouldn't do it. INFJs, and in a way all FJ types, doubt themselves when it comes to their means of achieving a goal. INFJs are really good at being like, okay, here's the path I wanna go down, here's where I wanna get one day, but then when it comes to the actual like, okay, what are the steps I need to get there? How, how do I work my way to that point? In reality, 
it's like, okay, it's starting to fall apart a bit. You're really looking for validation. You're like, hey, here's what I think is gonna work. What do you guys think? Do you do you like this idea? Do you value the, the path that I'm going down? And the problem is they could say no. The other part of it is because in, uh, uh, INFJs <laughs> have inferior extroverted sensing, which is about like just existing in the concrete world, actually doing stuff, actually taking steps in physical reality to complete the goal are very tough. And there's this mental thing that happens to everyone, but I think it happens to INFJs and INTJs especially badly is you have this grand vision and you tell someone about it and in your mind you get the same satisfaction as if you actually accomplished it and it kind of just cuts away your motivation. You lose the drive to do something, whether it's big or even small, if you talk to someone about it and be like, yeah man, this is a great idea. Maybe even especially if they tell you, yeah, that's a great idea. You might just be like, well, I got my validation. I don't actually have to do it. It's probably best to kind of actually start working at it and not really start talking about it until you have gotten some traction or unless you really need to talk to someone because they can really help you get things moving. Thanks for watching. Until next time, stay cool and attractive.